Alright guys, so on this step-by-step -step build video we are going to be showing you the assembly process for our 1000x500 Sphinx. As you can see this is a super sharp design. It's perfect for any normal sized table. It fits along the length as well as the width. It's a super rigid design with our reduction system on top here as well as our wheels running on the outside of the C-beam as well as in the C-channel here. This is a great design guys. Really looking forward to starting this build. So I'm going to go over some of the specs now. Alright, so with this configuration we have a workable depth of 64.5 millimeters or 2.5 inches, which is pretty significant guys. It's definitely uh, perfect for any type of design work. As you can see here we got plenty of room to work. We also have a cutting area of 325 millimeters or 12.5 inches. And our x-axis is at 833.5 millimeters or 32 and a half inches. So we definitely have a lot of room here on the x-axis guys. Like I said this configuration is definitely designed for convenience for the normal builder here. As you can see we're on one table and we have no issues fitting this machine on there. We also have a Z-Travel of 85 millimeters or 3.25 inches. So like I said we have pretty much enough room to do a lot of different design work here guys. 3D carvings, milling aluminum, different materials, definitely have a rigid design here guys. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to our step-by-step build-along video. Alright, moving on to the first step here guys, we are going to be assembling the base for our Sphinx. In this step we are going to need 8 of our cast corner connectors, we're also going to need 6 of our black angle corner connectors, 26 of our M5 T-nuts, 26 of our 8mm screws, our M5 ball driver, a magnetized screwdriver, permanent marker, and measuring tape. Alongside for our extrusion, we're going to need 3 of our 20 by 80 pieces at 380 millimeters. In addition to that, we're going to need 2 of our 20 by 60 1000 millimeter rails. And to start this off guys, we're going to go ahead and slide in 6 of our T-nuts to our 20 by 60 rail. So go ahead and grab the rail here and make sure you have the right side facing you. So we're going to slide our M5 T-nuts into this rail here, right into our slot. This will be facing us and will be the back end of our machine. So I'm going to go ahead and slide in six of our M5 T-nuts. So go ahead and do that guys. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and put this to the side for now. And move on to our next 20 by 60 rail. Once again, make sure that you know which slot you're going to be putting your T-nuts in. That way you can mount your 20 by 80 rails in the middle accordingly. So let's go ahead and slide six more into this front slot here. Alright, once again we're going to put this to the side. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and mount our cast corners to our 20 by 80 rails as well as our black angle corner connectors. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of our 20 by 80 rails here. Now on each side of the end piece, we are going to attach our cast corners. So our middle rail, we're actually going to put four of our cast corners. The other two rails will differ and we'll get to that on the following steps. So let's go ahead and start with this. We're going to go ahead and put two of our M5 T-nuts into our right slot here. So now you can take your ball driver and adjust these to the ends of your 20 by 80 rail. Now go ahead and grab one of your cast corners and an 8mm screw. We're going to go ahead and attach this to our 20 by 80 rail. Just kind of thread it into place. You'll feel the T-nut grab the screw. Make sure it's flush to the end of the 20 by 80 rail. This is very important for our mounting configuration. If it's too far back, you won't be able to attach your M5 T-nut to your cast corner from the 20 by 60 rail. So as you can see here, I'm flush to the end of the 20 by 80 rail. That's exactly what you want. So let's go ahead and do the other three the same way.
All right, perfect. So as you can see now, this 20 by 80 rail has two of our cast corners on each end. So a total of four. Now this is gonna be our center beam. So make sure when we start this configuration that this is going to be your center piece here. So we're gonna go ahead and put this to the side for now and work on our other two 20 by 80 rails. Now these are gonna differ a little bit. We're gonna have black angle corner connectors on one side as well as cast corners on the opposite side. So for this piece here, we're going to use as our, our right beam. We're going to go ahead and put in three of our M5 T-nuts. So we're going to have three of our black angle corner connectors on this one side. All right, now that we have the three on the one side, we're going to go ahead and move these to the appropriate sides so we can mount our black angle corner connectors. And this center one you can let float for now. We're going to do a measurement to find our halfway point here on the beam. And we'll mount our additional black angle corner connector. For now though, we're going to focus on the ends. Let's go ahead and grab a black angle corner connector, an 8mm screw. And just the same way we did with the cast corners, we want to make sure it's flush to the end. Let it grab the T-nut and tighten it down. Alright, so let's go ahead and complete this process for our additional three. And once again, you want to remember that we're going to have cast corners on one side, black angle corner connectors on another. So make sure you have your right side fixed with your black angle corner connectors on the right side. Left, you're going to have them on the left side. So we're going to go ahead and put on our cast corner connectors. So this will be technically the left side. As you can see, this is how I'm going to mount my beam. So let's go ahead and attach those. So as you can see, we have black on one side, our cast corners on the opposite. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at our third T-nut that's in here in our track. We're going to go ahead and take a measurement and then mount our third black angle corner connector on our 20 by 80 rail here. So go ahead and grab your measuring tape. So as you can see, this rail is at 380 millimeters. So we're going to take it to the halfway point here, which will be at 190 millimeters. So we're going to go ahead and grab our permanent marker and make a little point of reference. And once you do that, you can mount your black angle corner connector. As you can see, my T-nut is already aligned here. So we're going to go ahead and attach our black angle corner connector. So the only difference with this is it's not going to be aligned like our corner uh, brackets here. We're going to go ahead and align this black angle corner connector to an upward position. This will be mounting to our C-beam. So just like this, we're going to mount the black angle corner connector. So go ahead and grab an 8mm screw, push it through the slot here, and go ahead and attach it to your M5 T-nut. So that's looking great, guys. So we have our center point. Our black angle corner connector is mounted properly. We also have our end corners in place. So let's go ahead and put this to the side and let's move on to our last piece here. Once again, this is gonna be for our left side of the machine. So we want our black angle corner connectors on the left and our cast corners on the right side. So let's go ahead and get started by placing two of our M5 T-nuts here on the right side. We're gonna go ahead and move them into position. All right, so go ahead and grab your cast corner here, push in an eight millimeter screw, and once again, make sure it's flush at the end of the rail here and tighten it down. All right, so let's go ahead and finish it for our additional four. We have four of our brackets in place here. We're gonna go ahead and take a measurement once again at 190 millimeters, half of 380 millimeters. So go ahead and make that point of reference once again. And let's go ahead and mount our black angle corner connector. So as you can see, this is gonna be for our left side of the machine. So we're gonna go ahead and place this one off to the side and we'll move to our 20 by 60 rails and start our base assembly. All right, so taking one of the 20 by 60 rails here, I'm gonna go ahead and place that in front of our table. Moving anything that is in the way, let's go ahead and move all that to the side so we have room to work here. And let's go ahead and take our other 20 by 60 rail, making sure that the T-nuts are facing inward 
So this will be for the front of our machine. So we're gonna go ahead and rotate that. And as you can see for the back of my machine, we have the T-nuts facing us. So go ahead and make that adjustment if need be. All right, so now that we have our rails in place, we're gonna go ahead and adjust our T-nuts while we put in our left center and right beams. So as you can hear, see here, I'm gonna go ahead and find my, my spacing by just using the 20 by 80 rail. So that's perfect. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make the adjustments to my T-nuts. Just taking an M5 ball driver, we're going to go ahead and move two of our T-nuts down here to the left side. Same with our front 20 by 60 rail. Alright, perfect. So go ahead and put your left beam in between the 20 by 60 rails here. Alright, now as you can see, my black angle corner connectors are on the left side. This black angle corner connector is positioned upward. Remember, we're gonna mount our C-beam on top. So make sure that all these pieces are in place before we mount this to our 20 by 60. So now that we have everything in a position, let's go ahead and grab an eight millimeter screw and let's lock in this black angle corner connector here in the left corner. All right, make sure that's nice and tight. That looks great. As you can see, I'm flush against my 20 by 60 rail here. That's exactly what you want, guys. All right, so let's move on to the back end. All right, once again, we're gonna lock in this corner here. Let's go ahead and grab an eight millimeter screw, and let's go ahead and attach this. So now, we're gonna move on to our cast corners, and if you find that your T-nuts are pushed back too far, we're gonna go ahead and grab our magnetized screwdriver, and just simply put it in the slot, and you can pull your M5 T-nuts and manipulate the position. All right, that one's in position. We go ahead and attach that. So we'll move on to the opposite side. Once again, if you need to position your T-nut, this really comes in handy, just any type of magnetized screwdriver. And let's go ahead and attach this corner. All right, that looks great. So we're gonna go ahead and move to the center of our configuration here. And once again, we wanna find the center point of this base assembly. So let's go ahead and take a measurement. As you can see that we're spot on a thousand millimeters. So we're gonna go ahead and take half of that, which is 500 millimeters and make a point of reference mark. And we're gonna go ahead and repeat the process for our back rail. So go ahead and mark that at 500 as well. All right, once you have those marked, let's go ahead and grab our center beam, which is going to be the beam with cast corners on each side, as you can see here. We're going to go ahead and align that here in the middle. So now we're going to go ahead and move our T-nuts into position. So go ahead and slide two down. All right, now that we have those in position, we're going to do the same thing with our front 20 by 60 rail here. So once again, you can use your ball driver and just slide these down. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and attach our eight millimeter screws. Before we do that though, first, we wanna go ahead and take a look at our point of reference. Make sure it's aligned to the center of our 20 by 80 rail here. As you can see, the mark is in the center of this beam. So that's exactly what we want on both sides. All right, so let's go ahead and attach this center beam. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and move on to the right side of our machine. Once again, make sure that your black angle corner connectors are facing to the right. We're gonna go ahead and place that in the middle here and move our T-nuts to the position that they need to be. All right, that's in position. So let's go ahead and attach our last beam. All right, it's looking great, guys. As you can see here, we have our base assembly in place. It's looking good. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step, guys. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. 
we are going to be assembling our spoiler board configuration. So as you can see here, we're going to need 12 of our single L brackets, 12 of our drop-in T-nuts, 12 of our 8 millimeter screws, our ball driver, permanent marker, and our measuring tape. So as you can see here, we have our base assembly. We're going to go ahead and take some measurements first, and we're going to go ahead and start assembling our brackets. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this quadrant here take a measurement on the inside as you can see we are approximately about 360 millimeters from the inside from 20 by 80 to 20 by 80 so we're going to go ahead and take 180 millimeters and mark that as our point of reference all right and once you've done that we're going to go ahead and do that to our other quadrant so go ahead and take your tape once again we're going to go ahead and mark at 180 perfect and on the back end of the machine, we're going to also do the same thing. We want to make sure that we have this spacing correct. Alright, perfect. So now that we have our point of references for the front and the back of the machine, we're going to go ahead and work our way to the center. And we're going to measure in to our 20 by 80 rail at about 4 inches. So go ahead and make a mark at 4 inches from the front to the center of the machine and then from the back to the center. All right, and with our center beam, we're going to do the same exact thing as well as with our right beam. So let's go ahead and do that, guys. So now that we have all our marks in place, let's go ahead and start mounting these single L brackets. First off, we want to take notice that the whole spacing differs. So we have a hole that is further away from the corner here, and we have a hole that is closer to the corner. The one that is closer to the corner is going to mount to our 20 by 80 rail, and the further spacing will mount to our spoiler board. So let's go ahead and thread in an 8 millimeter screw with one of our drop-in T-nuts here. And just go ahead and twist that into place and this helps for our mounting configuration so you can go ahead and place it in any situation so as you can see we have it threaded let's go ahead and move it into the rail here where our point of reference is making sure that it is flush to our 20 by 80 rail go ahead and tighten that down perfect and if it does move as you can see like this one has tilted slightly we're going to go ahead and push that back upright we want it to be flush this way we have a strong mounting configuration for our spoiler board. So go ahead and uh, adjust that if need be. And let's move on to our next single L bracket. Alright, perfect. So let's go ahead and do this with all of our additional sides. Wherever you made the mark. Remember there's four in the center here. So we're going to have two on one side, two on the opposite side. And then of course, two on our right beam, as well as one in each quadrant on each side. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, that looks great, guys. So as you can see, we have all of our single L brackets in place. If you see any that are twisted, go ahead and adjust them now. Like I said, go ahead and stick the M5 ball driver in the hole here, and you can shift it to either direction, making sure that it's flush. Like as you can see, this one is flush against the 20 by 60 rail, as well as the 20 by 80s. So go ahead and adjust those if need be. If not, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step here, guys. All right, moving forward here, guys. We are going to be assembling our 500 C-beam to our base assembly. So we're going to need two of our 500 C-beams, as well as two of our M5 T-nuts, and two of our 8mm screws, as well as your M5 ball driver. So to start off here, guys, we're going to go ahead and take one of our C-beams. Place it here on our base assembly. We're going to get an idea of where our placement needs to be on our C-beam. That way it's a little bit easier to pinpoint where the M5 T-nut needs to go. 
So as you can see here, the placement looks nice. We have our C channel facing away from the machine. So we're going to do that on both sides. So as you can see here, on our outer slot is where our M5T nut is going to go. So go ahead and grab your M5T nut, making sure that your flange side is facing inward towards the C-beam. Go ahead and slide that into place. We're going to go ahead and bring our machine, hanging it slightly off the table here. And we're going to attach it to our black angle corner connector, which was the third one here in the center of our 20 by 80 rail. So we're going to go ahead and push our M5T nut here towards the middle. Placing that, we're going to go ahead and grab an 8mm screw and our ball driver and go ahead and seat that into place. So now that we have our CB mounted, let's go ahead and rotate the machine 180 degrees. Once again, making sure that your black angle corner connector is in the center here. Make sure it's tight against your 20 by 80 rail. And let's go ahead and grab the 500 C-beam and an M5T nut. Slide it into the first track here. And let's mount that to our black angle corner connector. Alright, once you get that nice and tight, you want to make sure that your C-beam is flush on each side of the 20 by 60 rail. As you can see here, mine is flush. Check both sides to make sure. If it is not flush, you can always make that adjustment. Just loosen the black angle corner connector and slide your C-beam across this axis here. So go ahead and rotate your machine back to the front. And as you can see, our assembly is coming along nicely. It's looking great, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to our next step. All right, guys, so on this step, we are going to be assembling our extreme wheels. As you can see, we're going to need our large extreme wheel shell here, two of our open builds bearings, and one of our precision shims. So to go ahead and assemble this wheel, I'm just going to grab the shell, one of our bearings, and pop one of the bearings into place, rotate the wheel around, add your precision shim, and pop your additional bearing into place. And that is a wheel assembly. We're gonna go ahead and put that to the side. We need to do 11 more just like this. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys, and we'll move on to our next step. All right, guys, so on this step, we are going to be assembling our Mini V Extreme Wheels. As you can see, we're gonna need our Mini V Extreme Shell, two of our Mini V bearings, and one of our Mini V Precision Shims. So similar to our last wheel assembly, we're going to pop our bearing into place here to the shell, rotate it around, add our mini V precision shim and our additional mini V bearing, but pop that into place. And that is your wheel assembly for our mini V extreme wheels. So let's go ahead and do our additional 23 wheels and we'll move on to our next step, guys. All right, guys. So on this step, we are going to be attaching our anti-backlash nut block to our y-axis right plate. So go ahead and grab your y-axis right plate, an anti-backlash nut block, two of our 20 millimeter screws, two of our three millimeter aluminum spacers, and two of our silver nylon hex nuts, and our M5 ball driver. So to start off, we're gonna go ahead and notice that we have two holes here in the middle for our anti-backlash nut block. So we're gonna go ahead and thread our 20 millimeter screws through. Let's go ahead and rotate the plate around. And in addition to that, we're going to go ahead and add our 3mm aluminum spacer on top of both of our 20mm screws. From there, we're going to attach our anti-backlash nut block. As you can see on one side, you have a recessed hole for our hex nut. This will be facing upward towards you. The other side is simply for the screws. So let's go ahead and place this just like so and add your nylon hex nuts. And what I usually do is I just kind of place them into the recessed holes here. And holding the screws in place, I'll rotate this around and tighten it down with our ball driver. And make sure it's nice and tight. I want to make sure that the anti-backlash nut block is straight as well. So if you need to make any adjustments, go ahead and do that. But that looks great, guys. So let's go ahead and move this plate to the side and we'll move on to our next step. Alright, moving right along here guys. On this step we are going to be assembling our wheels to our y-axis right plate. So we have our assembly that we have thus far. In addition to that we're going to have four of our six millimeter aluminum spacers. Also going to have six of our centric spacers, seven of our mini V precision shims, ten of our black nylon hex nuts, two of our large extreme wheels, 
eight of our mini V extreme wheels and 10 of our 27 millimeter screws. We're also gonna need our ball driver and permanent marker. So to start this off guys, we're gonna go ahead and take our eccentric spacers with our permanent marker and we're gonna mark this etched six millimeter sign on the eccentric. And the purpose of doing so is while we're adjusting our eccentrics to add preload to our rail, we wanna make sure to have an indicator to know how much we need to put on or take off. So let's go ahead and mark each one of these uh, centrics. All right, perfect. Once you have that finished, I'm gonna go ahead and put our permanent marker away. And we're gonna take notice to our plate assembly that we have this far. As you can see, we have four holes here at the bottom that are slightly larger than the top. These are gonna be for our centric spacers and they're larger so we can make that adjustment. So we can add preload to the wheels. The top portion here is gonna be simply a fixed wheel. So that'll be our aluminum spacer. So go ahead and feed the screws through. All right, so now that we have those screws in place, we're also gonna put two more here on the top. These are gonna be for our large extreme wheels. So once again, these are going to be eccentrics. As you can see, the holes are slightly larger than our fixed wheels here. So let's go ahead and put two more of our 27 millimeter screws in place. And then we're going to go ahead and rotate this plate around. All right, now that we have all our screws in place here, we're going to start our stacking configuration. Starting with the bottom for our eccentrics. Go ahead and grab one of your eccentric spacers. Notice that my mark side is going to be facing away from the fixed wheels towards me. So let's go ahead and put those in place on all of our 27 millimeter screws here. All right, in addition to the eccentrics, we're going to go ahead and add our mini V precision shims. And following the precision shims, we're going to go ahead and add our mini V extreme wheels on top of each screw, followed by our black nylon hex nuts. Let's go ahead and thread these in place. It helps with the assembly when you thread it into place. I found especially when you're trying to rotate the plate around, you don't want the assembly to fall apart. So let's go ahead and thread those on all of our screws here at the bottom. All right, that looks great. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the top side here for our fixed wheels. Starting with our six millimeter aluminum spacer. We go ahead and put those on all the screws here. And our mini V precision shims. All right, now that we have our mini V precision shims on, we're going to go ahead and add our mini extreme wheels. And our black nylon hex nuts on top and go ahead and thread those into place. All right, now moving up to our top side for our large extreme wheels, we go ahead and add our eccentrics. Once again, we want the mark side facing away from our fixed wheels, so we're gonna face these upward away from us. All right, and our extreme wheels on top. Go ahead and add our black nylon hex nuts on top. All right, now that we have everything threaded in place here, we're gonna go ahead and tighten them down. So let's go ahead and rotate the plate here. Taking your spanner wrench and your M5 ball driver, let's go ahead and tighten all of these down. So now that we have our wheel assembly in place, as you can see it's really looking great guys. We're going to go ahead and put this plate to the side for now and move on to our next step. Right here to the next step guys, we are going to be assembling our anti-backlash nut block to our Y-axis left plate. So go ahead and grab your Y-axis left plate, an anti-backlash nut block, two of your 20 millimeter screws, two of your 3 millimeter aluminum spacers, and two of your silver nylon hex nuts. So to start this off guys, we're gonna go ahead and take notice to our center position here of our hole spacing. This is for our anti-backlash nut block. So we're gonna go ahead and feed our 20 millimeter screws in place here. Rotate the plate around. Add your three millimeter aluminum spacers. 
and your anti-backlash nut block. Once again, like our previous plate, I just want you to take notice to our recessed holes here, which is in a design of a hex. That's for our silver nylon hex nuts. So make sure that this is upright facing you. The reason for this is when you're tightening these nylon hex nuts down, they simply grab into this recessed hole and you're able to tighten it without any type of span or wrench. So now that we have them in place, we're going to go ahead and push our screws into the anti-backlash nut block, tilting the plate sideways. We're going to go ahead and tighten this down, guys. I kind of work my way from one screw to the next. That way one of our nylon hex nuts does not fall out. Once you have them positioned and threaded, we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. All right, perfect. Make sure that your anti-backlash nut block is straight. You want to make sure that the lead screw seats perfectly into the anti-backlash nut block. All right, guys, so this is looking great. We're going to go ahead and put this assembly that we have thus far to the side, and we're going to move on to the next step, guys. All right, moving forward here, guys. On this step, we are going to be assembling our wheels to our Y-axis left plate. As you can see, we're going to need our Y-axis left plate assembly that we have thus far. We're going to need eight of our Mini V Extreme wheels, two of our large Extreme wheels, 10 of our 27 millimeter screws, 10 of our black nylon hex nuts, eight of our Mini V Precision shims, six of our centric spacers, and four of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, along with our ball driver, spanner wrench, and permanent marker. So to start off guys, we're gonna go ahead and grab our centrics. Like we did with our other Y-axis plate, we're gonna go ahead and mark our six millimeter etched sign here on our centrics. So we're gonna go ahead and mark this. This is for reference. So when we add preload to our access, we know whether to tighten or to loosen, and this will be our point of reference. So let's go ahead and mark each one of these on our centrics. All right, perfect. So go ahead and put the permanent marker to the side. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at our Y plate. And as you can see, we have our fixed wheel side and our centric side here at the bottom, as well as the top portion here for our centrics and our large extreme wheels. So we're gonna go ahead and feed our screws through and start this assembly process just like we did our other Y plate. Now that our screws are erect here, we're going to go ahead and start our stacking configuration. Just like we did on the other plate, we're going to start with our centric side, making sure that our marked, our marked reference point is facing towards us, away from the fixed wheels. And this helps for our adjustments that need to be made on the Y-axis, adding preload to the wheels. So let's go ahead and put the eccentrics on each one of these screws. All right, following that, our mini V precision shims. And following that are Mini V Extreme Wheels. And let's go ahead and thread on our black nylon hex nuts. All right, so now for our fixed portion, we go ahead and grab our six millimeter aluminum spacers and place those on all of the screws. Following that are Mini V Precision Shims. Add those to all the screws. So that we're going to go ahead and add our mini V wheels and go ahead and thread on our black nylon hex nuts here. All right, now for the top portion here, we go ahead and add our centrics, our mark side facing away from the fixed wheels. All right, once again, we're not going to add the precision shims to this portion. That way our spacing is correct for our lead screw. So let's go ahead and add our large extreme wheels on top of our centrics here. And let's thread on our black nylon hex nuts here. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and rotate this plate to the side here. And we're going to go ahead and tighten down all of our wheels. Alright, now that we have all our wheels tightened, 
and our assembly is complete so far. You can see it's starting to look really nice guys. Let's go ahead and put this plate to the side. I'm going to go ahead and move on to our next step. Alright guys, moving on to the next step here. We are going to be assembling our anti-backlash nut block to our x-axis plate here. So as you can see, we're going to need our x-axis plate with our hole spacing here in the middle is where we're going to place our screws. We have our anti-backlash nut block, two of our 20 millimeter screws, two of our 3 millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our precision shims, and two of our silver nylon hex nuts along with our M5 ball driver. So to start this off guys, we're going to go ahead and thread our 20 millimeter screws through these center holes here. Go ahead and rotate this around and we're going to go ahead and add our 3 millimeter aluminum spacer along with our precision shim. In addition to that, we're going to go ahead and add our anti-backlash nut block and our silver nylon hex nuts. So we're going to go ahead and hold the screws in place here like we did with our other plate assemblies and go ahead and start screwing in to our nylon hex nuts making sure that this is nice and tight guys we don't want any movement all right so now that we have our anti-backlash nut block assembled here on the x-axis plate we're going to go ahead and put this to the side for now and move on to our next step all right guys so on this step we are going to be assembling our wheels to our x-axis plates. As you can see here we're going to need our x-axis plate assembly that we have with our anti-backlash nut block. Our additional sandwiched plate which will have the open build sign etched on the back. So this will be facing the back of the machine. We're also going to need eight of our large extreme wheels, eight of our precision shims, four of our black nylon hex nuts, four of our centric spacers, four of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our 60 millimeter screws, our ball driver, spanner wrench, and a permanent marker here guys. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and grab our centrics, marking our etched 6 millimeter sign here on the centric. We're going to go ahead and mark all of these guys. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and put our permanent marker away. We're going to go ahead and grab our first plate assembly that we have, the one with the anti-backlash nut block. We're going to go ahead and run our 60 millimeter screws through. So as you can see, we have three holes here on the top, three on the bottom. We're going to be using the two corner holes here on both sides. Our centric side is going to be slightly larger. So we're going to start with that side first. But first, let's go ahead and thread in each one of these screws. All right, now go ahead and rotate the plate around, and let's go ahead and start our stacking configuration. Starting with our eccentric spacers, once again, we want to take notice to our marked side. It's going to be facing away from our fixed wheels, so it's going to be facing us. So let's go ahead and put those on first, followed by our precision shims. Next, we're going to have our large extreme wheels. On top of the wheels, we're going to add our 9mm aluminum spacers. Next, we're going to go ahead and grab another large extreme wheel and add it to both of our screws. Go ahead and add a precision shim next. And lastly, we're going to go ahead and add our centrics on the top. So this is what we call a dual wheel configuration. As you can see, that the stack allows us to have extra rigidity and accuracy by having two wheels running along the C-beam. We're going to go ahead and add our final eccentric here, once again making sure that our marked side is facing us away from our fixed wheels. And that's perfect there guys, we're going to go ahead and move on to our fixed wheels. So first we're going to go ahead and add our 6mm aluminum spacers, in addition our precision shims, and our large extreme wheels, 9mm aluminum spacer, extreme wheel, precision shims, and our 6 millimeter aluminum spacer. All right, now that we have our stack configuration in place, we're gonna go ahead and add our X back plate here. So once again, we want the open builds etch sign here to be facing us. So go ahead and stack this onto our configuration that we have. You should seat your centrics in place. You'll feel them kind of like snap into place. That's what you want. From there, we're gonna go ahead and 
add our black nylon hex nuts. I'm gonna go ahead and thread them into place here. That way we don't have to worry about our screws coming loose and our stack configuration spilling all over the place here, guys. Let's go ahead and thread those. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and rotate this to the side here. And we're going to go ahead and tighten these down, guys. All right, perfect. So as you can see here, we have our x-axis plates and the configuration with our wheels. That's looking really nice, guys. We're gonna go ahead and put this assembly to the side for now and move on to our next step. All right, moving forward here to the next step, guys. We are going to be assembling our x-assembly to our z-axis C-beam here. As you can see, we're gonna need our 250 millimeter C-beam as well as our x-axis assembly that we have. Eight of our M5 T-nuts, eight of our 10 millimeter screws with our ball driver. So to start off with this assembly, guys, we're gonna take notice that this assembly is going to mount to our z-axis on the back side of the C-beam. So the C-channel will be for our z-axis actuator. So make sure that you have this turned over like so and make sure that our x-axis assembly is facing with our anti-backlash nut block mount facing us. So this plate will be mounted just like so. So it'll be hanging slightly off the edge of the C-beam and it's going to mount through our M5 T-nuts and our 10 millimeter screws. So to get started here guys, we're gonna go ahead and feed in four of our T-nuts into each one of our slots here on the C-beam. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our x-axis assembly here with a 10 millimeter screw. And we're gonna go ahead and feed in one screw here into our top hole here on the x-axis back plate. As you can see, we have four holes here which match up identically with both plates. These are actually an access point for our ball driver. So we're gonna go ahead and stick our ball driver through, attaching to our 10 millimeter screw here. And we're gonna screw that into our M5 T-nut. So let's go ahead and do that quick, guys. And we're gonna take notice here that our M5 T-nuts here through the access holes are properly aligned. If not, you can move them around with your ball driver by simply sticking it through the access holes and adjusting the T-nut to where it's easy to attach your 10 millimeter screw. So let's go ahead and do the top four. And sometimes I'll rotate this so the M5 T-nut will catch the screw. So if you need to tilt it, go ahead and do so. It makes it a little bit easier. You'll feel it catch, and that's exactly what we want, guys. Let's go ahead and take another 10 millimeter screw here. All right, perfect. So now we have the top section done. We're gonna go ahead and loosen these slightly. That way we can move them up the track of the C-beam, and we can access our bottom four holes. So we're gonna slide that up slightly, and let's go ahead and feed in our additional M5 T-nuts here. So it'll be a total of four here on the bottom. All right, so now we're gonna align these T-nuts with our holes here on our X-axis plates. All right, so go ahead and tighten those down with our 10 millimeter screws. Once again, if you need to tilt it, go ahead and do so. All right, now that we have all of our screws in place here with our M5 T-nuts, like I said before, you can adjust this by simply loosening the screws, and you can slide this X-axis assembly up and down our Z-axis. We're gonna go ahead and loosen each one of the screws so we can make sure that this plate assembly is completely square, as well as in the right place. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure it's flush against our C-beam here before we tighten down our screws. Push it up slightly, and that looks great. So we're gonna go ahead and fasten that down. All right, perfect. It's a great job, guys. That was a little bit tricky, but we got this mounted. It's looking great. We're gonna go ahead and put this assembly to the side and move on to our next step. All right, moving forward to the next step here. We are going to be assembling our anti-backlash nut block to our 
Z-axis gantry plate. So as you can see here, we're going to need our double wide C-beam gantry plate, our anti-backlash nut block, two of our 20 millimeter screws, two of our 3 millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our precision shims, two of our silver nylon hex nuts, and our M5 ball driver here. So to get started guys, we're going to take uh, notice to the whole spacing here on our double wide gantry plate. And we are going to set our screws through these two holes here. So second to the bottom. So let's go ahead and feed our 20 millimeter screws through here. Rotate this around. Add our 3 millimeter aluminum spacers with our precision shims as well. And this allows for proper spacing for our lead screw to run through our anti-backlash nut block properly. So let's go ahead and add our anti-backlash nut block, making sure that our hexed recessed holes here are facing upwards towards us. And go ahead and place this like so. And we're going to go ahead and place our nylon hex nuts in here as well. We're going to go ahead and hold on to the screws as we tilt this sideways. That way we can tighten this down without our hex nuts falling out. Now that we have them threaded in, we're going to go ahead and tighten them down completely, making sure that our anti-backlash nut block is completely straight. Alright, as you can see, this is tilted slightly, so I'm going to go ahead and make a slide adjustment here, just loosening these screws, situating the nut block. And then I'm going to retighten it down here. All right, so now that we have our anti-backlash nut block attached here to our gantry plate, we're going to go ahead and put this to the side, and we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step, guys. All right, moving forward here, guys, we are going to be assembling our wheels to our Z-axis gantry plate. In this process, we are going to need our Z-axis gantry assembly with eight of our screws, four of our six-millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our six millimeter eccentric spacers, eight of our mini V precision shims, eight of our black nylon hex nuts, and eight of our mini V extreme wheels. In addition to that, our tooling is going to be our M5 ball driver, spanner wrench, and a permanent marker. So to get started here, guys, we're gonna go ahead and grab our eccentric spacers, marking our six millimeter etched sign here on the eccentric. And this is for our adjustments to add preload to our axis. Let's go ahead and mark each one of those guys. All right, perfect. So now let's go ahead and put our permanent marker to the side. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at our Z-axis gantry plate here. As you can see, we have four holes here that are slightly larger than our fixed side. These are going to be for our eccentrics. So we're going to go ahead and feed in four of our screws for each one of these holes here, so four per side. So a total of eight. Let's go ahead and do that, guys. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and rotate this around. As you can see, our screws are erect here. So now we can go ahead and start our stacking configuration. Starting with our eccentrics, make sure your mark side is facing away from your fixed side. So this will be facing to the right of the plate. I'm going to go ahead and set these into place here on each one of these screws. Following our eccentrics, we're going to go ahead and put on our mini V precision shims. Following that, we're going to go ahead and put on our mini V extreme wheels. And lastly, we're going to go ahead and thread on our black nylon hex nut. All right, perfect. So this side is complete. Let's go ahead and move on to the fixed side, starting with our six millimeter aluminum spacer, followed by our mini V precision shims, and our mini V extreme wheels on top, and thread on our black nylon hex nut last. All right, that looks great, guys. We're going to go ahead and rotate this to the side. Taking our spanner wrench with our ball drive, we're going to go ahead and tighten all of these down. So let's go ahead and do that, guys.
All right, perfect. Once you have those tightened down, as you can see, we have our wheels assembled here on our Z-axis gantry. And it looks great, guys. So we're going to go ahead and put this to the side and move on to our next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our Z-axis actuator. So as you can see here, we have our X-axis carriage assembly attached to our Z-axis C-beam, as well as our Z-axis gantry system here, as well as two of our C-beam end mounts, one of our NEMA 23 reduction plates, and eight of our 25 millimeter screws here. Our tooling needed is going to be our M5 ball driver and our open build spanner wrench. So to start off here, guys, we're going to go ahead and put in our Z-axis gantry system here, making sure that our centrics are adjusted properly. We're going to go ahead and slide this into place here, like so. And if you have too much preload on the system, it will not go, so do not force it. We're going to go ahead and make adjustments to our eccentrics. I'm going to go ahead and rotate each one of these eccentrics in the same direction, in the same increments. So I'm going to slightly adjust these counterclockwise. That's perfect, guys. So we're going to go ahead and leave this in place. That way we can go ahead and add on our C-beam end mounts and our reduction plate system here. So grabbing one of our C-beam end mounts, we're going to go ahead and mount this to the bottom of our C-beam. Taking four of our 25 millimeter screws, we're going to go ahead and thread these in place. Now as you can see here, our X, our X carriage assembly is slightly over the C-beam. We're going to make an adjustment to the back of this once we finish this because we want this flush against our CB and we don't want to pass it. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and thread these in place here guys. Once we have them threaded in partially, we're going to go ahead and tighten them down with our ball driver. So let's go ahead and screw all of these in place here guys. Make sure that they're nice and tight. All right, that's beautiful. As you can see, we have recessed holes here in our C-beam end mounts. I'll show you on this one here. So the screws fit flush, which it makes for a nice looking machine. I'll tell you what, this is really sweet looking, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and make the adjustment here to our X carriage system. Let's go ahead and rotate it around. And breaking loose these 10 millimeter screws, just slightly. We just need a little movement. We're gonna make sure that this is flush against our C-beam end mount. So let's go ahead and move that up slightly. As you can see, I want this completely flush here to the C-beam. Now let's go ahead and tighten this down. And that's the cool thing about this modular system too, is a lot of thought has been put into our parts. These M5 T-nuts are mobile. So by simply loosening the screws, you could change the whole position of this system in the Z-axis. You can modify it in many different ways. So it's just a really cool system, guys. This is just one of our many different configurations put together into a machine bundle. As you can see, this is solid. It looks great. It's uniform. Really excited to see the finished product here, guys. All right, perfect. So now we have that nice and tight. We're going to go ahead and rotate the Z-axis back around. And we're going to work on the top portion here of our Z-axis. Making sure that our C-beam end mount is first here to mount. We're going to add our reduction plate as well. So I'm going to go ahead and stand this up like so. Make it a little bit easier for us to um, mount this reduction plate system as well as our C-beam end mount here. Alright, so you're going to do a stacking configuration here. Making sure that the holes are aligned. We're going to go ahead and thread in our 25 millimeter screws. Just makes it a little bit easier for uh, positioning and ease of assembly. I really uh, recommend threading these in first before you try to tighten down one side because it might end up crooked and you don't want that. Alright, perfect. So let's go ahead and tighten those down, guys. Making sure that your C-beam end mount is flush as well as your reduction plate here. Make any adjustments if need be. So now we have our z-axis gantry plate in place our end mounts and reduction plate in place so this assembly is good it's looking great guys as you can see 
It's really coming together. This is almost an actuator. We're going to put in our lead screw next, and that will be in our next step, guys. All right, guys, moving on to the next step here. We are going to be assembling our lead screw to complete the actuator here for the Z-axis. We're also going to be mounting our NEMA 23 motor to our reduction system. So in the step, we're going to need our Z-axis assembly that we have thus far, a NEMA 23 motor. We're going to need two of our flange bearings, two of our lock collars, two of our 8 millimeter shims, GT3 closed loop timing belt, we're going to need our GT3 20 tooth clamp bore uh, pulley. We're also going to need our GT3 quarter inch bore uh, timing pulley. In addition to that, we're going to need four of our 20 millimeter screws, four of our black nylon hex nuts, 290 millimeter lead screw. We're also going to need our ball driver set and our spanner wrench. So to get started here, guys, we're going to go ahead and grab our assembly. And we're going to start with our motor first. So we're going to go ahead and put this down to the side. Taking our motor, we're going to go ahead and put it into position. So it will fit perfectly into this slot here in our reduction plate. You'll actually kind of feel it uh, come into place. And as you can see here, we have mounting holes where our screws will go through. So let's go ahead and set that down for now. Grab our 20 millimeter screws and we're going to thread these through the top here. So we're going to go ahead and do that with all four of the mounting holes here in the NEMA 23 motor. Alright, we're going to go ahead and rotate this around so we can have access to the screws just like so. And let's go ahead and grab our black nylon hex nuts here. We're going to thread them onto these screws. Alright, once you have that started, we're going to go ahead and grab the spanner wrench and our M5 ball driver. And we're going to tighten one of these down just so it's a little bit easier for um, our assembly process here on this motor. So what I do is I, I lay the spanner wrench flat here in the crevice of the NEMA 23 motor and it grips the hex nut so it's a little bit easier to tighten down. You'll notice that it's a bit awkward to get the spanner wrench into position. Alright, now that we got that one tight, we're going to do the same thing for all these additional screws. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, perfect. Now that we have those tight, I want you guys to notice that on this reduction plate we have slotted holes here, and this is for the adjustment of the motor, so we can move this down to add tension to our belt on our reduction system. So we might actually have to move that down, so I just wanted to give you a heads up, let you know that that option is available with this reduction system, which is nice. So, to move on to our next step, we're going to go ahead and take our our timing pulley here with a quarter inch bore we're going to attach it to our motor shaft so let's go ahead and rotate the motor shaft to the flat side here as you can see this will mount to our set screw so we're going to go ahead and grab our ball driver slide this into place and we're going to tighten it down so we want to push it down quite a bit and you can adjust it too because we want it to be level with our additional timing pulley that will be attached to our lead screw. So let's make sure that we have it in place and if need be we can make that adjustment later on. Alright, perfect. So now let's go ahead and move on to the lead screw. We're going to go ahead and grab our 290 millimeter lead screw and we're going to go ahead and feed this through our end mount adding our flange bearing 8 millimeter shim and our 8 millimeter lock collar here. Alright, we're going to keep these on this side of the z-axis and we're going to feed the screw through till we meet the anti-backlash nut block and then you're going to rotate the lead screw to the right and feed it through making sure that these parts stay here on this end so just keep screwing that through and once you see the lead screw come out on the other side we're going to add some additional parts the same that we did on this side alright so we can see that the lead screw has came through we're going to go ahead and add our lock collar first followed by our 8 millimeter shim and our flange bearing. Let's go ahead and feed this all the way to the end here. 
Now we want to make sure that the lead screw is all the way through and as you can see it's flush here on our C-beam end mount. That's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and lock our flange bearing into place here. It'll fit right into the end mount. And then we're going to tighten down our lock collar. You want to make sure that it is nice and tight. We don't want any movement in this lead screw. Alright, and we're going to do the same thing to the opposite end here. Alright, perfect. So that's nice and tight. That lead screw is not going anywhere. If you need to make any more adjustments, making sure that the lock collar is pushed all the way against your flange bearing, go ahead and do so. This one actually came loose a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and retighten that lock collar. So moving forward here, we're going to go ahead and attach our, our clamping pulley to our lead screw. So let's go ahead and attach that and tighten it down. And you want to make sure that this pulley is far enough away from our reduction plate. So as you can see here, I have a little bit of a gap. That's exactly what you want. As you can see, when we move the timing pulley, the lead screw also moves, as well as the gantry plate. It's looking great, guys. So let's go ahead and add our, our timing belt here. And go ahead and slide that onto both of our pulleys. As you can see that they are level, if they're not, go ahead and make adjustments to most likely it'll be this back timing pulley here that's connected to the motor shaft. So make those adjustments if necessary. This is level. We're going to go ahead and adjust our motor now because as you can see, there's no tension in this belt. So we want to make sure that there is tension. Not too much, but just enough. So we'll go ahead and loosen up our motor screws here and make that adjustment. All right, now leaving some tension on the timing belt, as you can see here, I can pinch it down, but I can't touch both ends of the belt to uh, each other. That's exactly what you want as far as tension goes. So we're gonna keep it there, lock down one of these screws into place, and tighten the rest down. All right, perfect. Now that looks exceptional, guys. We have one of our actuators complete, the Z actuator, and it looks great, guys. That reduction system's looking nice. So let's go ahead and put this to the side, guys, and we're going to move on to the next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to need our base assembly back, and we're also going to need both of our Y plates, our Y left and our Y right. So both of these assemblies are needed, as well as our spanner wrench. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and make adjustments to our centrics so we can add the preload here and our C channel of the C beam. So let's go ahead and get started here, starting with our Y axis right plate here. We're going to go ahead and run this through the C channel. If it has preload already on it, let's go ahead and make these adjustments to our centrics. We're going to rotate all the centrics in the same direction, making small turns. And we're going to rotate them all in the same direction here. Alright, perfect. So within the C-channel, I have the perfect amount of preload. As you can see here on the top, we also have a centrics that we need to adjust. This wheel is actually perfect. We're going to go ahead and um, this one here, as you can see, is loose. We're going to go ahead and adjust that one. Just turning it to the right. Going to add some preload. Perfect. So now it's nice and tight on the rail. As you can see, we have free movement, and it's not too tight. All right, that's perfect, guys. Let's go ahead and move on to the left side here. Once again, we're going to test it in the C-channel. If we have preload, which we do, we're going to go ahead and make that adjustment to our centrics. Moving them counterclockwise here. All right, that fit in there perfect. So our wheels here in the C-channel are adjusted properly. They feel great. Let's go ahead and check the top eccentrics. As you can see, both of these wheels are loose. We're going to go ahead and adjust those. All right, perfect. So that's nice and snug against the rail. It's not too tight. That's just what we want, guys. So now that we have both of our Y-axis plates in place here on our assembly, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next step. 
All right, moving forward to the next step here, guys. We're going to be attaching our Y end plates to our assembly that we have thus far. As you can see, it's coming along nicely. It's looking really great, guys. So we're gonna be putting on these end plates to each one of these corners. We're gonna start with our front plates here. So the front of the machine is going to be, as you can see here, the Sphinx plates for the Y axis are going to be in this direction, facing towards the front of the machine. So we wanna make sure that we have the right Y end plates here for our Y axis. So these are the front plates and these are the back plates. It will attach our uh, motors to the ends of these plates. We have threaded holes here, so our screws will fit in there perfectly, and that mounting configuration works with these plates. So we're going to need all of our Y end plates, which is four in total. We're going to need 16 of our M5 T-nuts, 16 of our 15 millimeter screws, 16 of our 12 millimeter screws, a magnetized screwdriver, and our M5 ball driver. So to get started here guys, we're going to go ahead and feed in our M5 T-nuts to our 20 by 60 rail here, which is part of our base assembly. We're going to insert them into this slot here, paying attention to the flange side of the T-nut that will be facing inside like so. So let's go ahead and insert four on each side. We're going to do the same for the opposite side as well. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, perfect. So now we're gonna go ahead and make some adjustments to the T-nuts. Just making sure the spacing is uh, correct makes it a little bit easier for mounting these end plates. So I'm gonna go ahead and spread these apart like so. For the left side, then we're gonna do the same on the right side here. All right, perfect. So now that we have our T-nuts in place here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of our front end plates here, bring it to the end of the C-beam, Go ahead and grab one of your 15 millimeter screws and we're going to thread that into place just like so and let's go ahead and grab our additional three 15 millimeter screws and thread those into the C-beam. Alright perfect, so go ahead and grab the ball driver and we're going to tighten these down making sure that the end plate is flush to the C-beam. Alright, perfect. So now to the 20 by 60 rail. As you can see, we have four holes here at the bottom of our end plate. We're going to go ahead and grab one of our 12 millimeter screws and attach that to one of our M5 T-nuts. Making sure that our C-beam is flush against our 20 by 60 rail. As you can see, ours is flush. That's exactly what you want, guys. Want to make sure that this whole system is square. So you can go ahead and grab that additional 12 millimeter screw and latch it into the T-nut here. Make sure it's nice and tight. I'm going to do the same thing for these additional two holes. You can always use your magnetized screwdriver as well to shift these T-nuts around. Alright, perfect. Now we have this one side done. We're going to go ahead and shift over to our other side and do the same process. We're going to attach it to our C-beam first and then latch it into place on the bottom 20 by 60 rail here. What I'm going to do now is just kind of shift the T-nuts to align with these holes. This makes it a little bit easier. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab a 15 millimeter screw. We're going to go ahead and thread in our plate to our C-beam. All right, now we're going to go ahead and grab four of our 12 millimeter screws here and tie it into our M5 T-nuts that are placed in that 20 by 60 rail. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, perfect. So we have both of our end plates on our Y axis here. It's looking great, guys. We're gonna go ahead and rotate this machine 180 degrees. And we're gonna repeat the same process here on the back end of the machine. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys.
All right, perfect guys. So as you can see, we have all of our end plates in place here. Machine's really coming together, guys. So let's go ahead and put this to the side and we'll move on to our next step. All right, moving forward to the next step here, guys. We are going to be adding our x-axis to our machine assembly that we have thus far. As you can see, our frame is looking nice. We have both y-axis plates and end plates in place here. So we're going to go ahead and grab our z-axis assembly. We're going to need a 1,000 millimeter C-beam. We're also going to need eight of our 15 millimeter screws and our ball driver. Now to start this off, we're going to go ahead and grab our 1,000 millimeter C-beam. We're going to place it from plate to plate here on the end on the y-axis, making sure that the C-channel is facing away from us. As you can see, this is the front of the machine, so the back end of the C-beam will be facing you. All right, so now that we have it in place here, we're going to go ahead and run our Z-axis on the X-axis C-beam, making sure that there's no preload on the wheels. If there is, we're going to go ahead and adjust the eccentrics. So we're going to go ahead and adjust our eccentrics. We want to make sure that it fits onto our X-axis C-beam. Just going to go ahead and turn these to the right. All of them should be turned in the same direction here. All right, so let's go ahead and give that a try. All right, perfect. So now our Z-axis is attached to the 1,000 millimeter C-beam here. Let's check the wheels to make sure that there's no play. Everything feels great. That's a perfect amount of preload. So let's go ahead and run this C-beam in between both of our Y-axis plates. We're going to work on one side first to give us a little rigidity. That way the C-beam isn't falling. I'm just going to go ahead and grab one of our 15 millimeter screws here and thread that into the C-beam. All right, and then I'm going to put the additional three to lock this side into place. All right, very nice. So let's go ahead and tighten these down. All right, now let's move on to the left side. Same process, we're gonna go ahead and attach our x-axis to our y left plate. All right, make sure everything is nice and tight. All right, that looks great, guys. So we're going to go ahead and push our gantry system all the way back. All right, and this is what you should have as an end result. As you can see, our Z-axis is now attached and our X-axis is attached. This machine's really coming together, guys. It's looking great. Let's go ahead and move on to our next step. All right guys, so on this step we are going to be attaching our lead screw to our x-axis as well as mounting our motor to the right side for our x-axis. So taking a look at the machine, it's really coming together nicely guys. So this is going to be for our x-axis creating an actuator. So let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to need a thousand millimeter lead screw, our NEMA 23 motor, four of our 60 millimeter screws, two of our flange bearings, two of our eight millimeter lock collars, two of our eight millimeter shims, four of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, and our flexible coupling here. So to start this off guys, we're gonna go ahead and attach our motor to the right side of this machine. And the reason for doing this is so we can have a workspace here to the left. So you can put your laptop, and as you can see this unit here, is perfect for a tabletop which is super awesome so let's go ahead and grab the NEMA 23 one of your 60 millimeter screws add a 40 millimeter aluminum spacer along with a 9 millimeter aluminum spacer and we're gonna go ahead and attach this to our y-axis right plate as you can see here there are four holes here that are threaded pre-threaded for our motor so let's go ahead and attach the top right we're, gonna, we're not going to tighten it down all the way because we need to put in our additional screws. So let's go ahead and leave that one a little loose. Attach our 40 millimeter aluminum spacer to our second screw along with the 9 millimeter aluminum spacer. 
And once again, we're going to tighten this down. All right, so let's do that for our additional two here on the bottom of the motor. All right, now that we have all four of the screws in place, we're going to go ahead and tighten them all down. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and take our flexible coupling here. We're going to attach it to our motor shaft. First, noticing that the hole spacing is different on each side. This is for a quarter inch bore, which will be for our NEMA 23. The other side is for our lead screw. So let's go ahead, find the flat shaft here on the motor. Find the set screws here on the flexible coupling here. And let's put this into place and tighten that down. All right, now that that's nice and tight, we're going to go ahead and rotate it around, tightening the additional screw here. Make sure it's seated properly on the motor shaft. And that's perfect, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to our lead screw. Let's rotate the machine 90 degrees. And as you can see here, our C channel is exposed. So we're going to run our lead screw from the opposite end of the machine down here to our motor. So let's go ahead and turn it an additional 90 degrees. And let's go ahead and grab the lead screw, running it through this y-axis right plate. We're going to add our additional three parts, our flange bearing, lock collar, and 8 millimeter shim. First, our flange bearing, the flange side facing inward towards your y-axis right plate. Go ahead and grab your 8 millimeter shim next. And lastly, we are going to put on our lock collar. Now keep these parts at the end. We're going to go ahead and feed this to our anti-backlash nut block and rotate the lead screw to the right, threading it through the anti-backlash nut block. And we're going to do this until the lead screw is exposed on the other side here. As you can see, we can, we can see the lead screw. We're going to go ahead and put our additional parts on, starting with our lock collar, 8 millimeter shim, and our flange bearing with the flange side facing in towards our y-axis plate. So now we're going to continue to thread this through until we reach our flexible coupling. Alright, perfect. So now that you fed it all the way to the end, you should see here that this end of the lead screw fits flush against our plate. That's exactly what you want. Let's go ahead and take our parts here, starting with the flange bearing. We're going to make sure that it locks into place on this Y plate here. And we're going to go ahead and tighten down our lock collar. Perfect. So let's go ahead and move to our left side here. We're going to do the same thing, locking in our flange bearing and tightening down the lock collar. All right, that looks great. So now we're going to attach the flexible coupling to our lead screw here. As you can see, it's already fed into the flexible coupling. We're going to simply tighten this down, both on this side where the screw is facing and on the other side for the set screw. And let's tighten that down. That looks great. It's attached to our lead screw. Now we have our X actuator in place. It's looking really good, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to our next step. All right, moving forward here, guys. We are going to be attaching our lead screws to each Y-axis. We're going to need two of our 500 millimeter lead screws, eight of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, eight of our 60 millimeter screws, eight of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our flexible couplings, four of our eight millimeter shims, four of our flange bearings, four of our eight millimeter lock collars two of our NEMA 23 motors and our ball driver set here. So to get started guys, we're going to go ahead and attach our motors. Grabbing a NEMA 23, we're going to go ahead and run a 60 millimeter th screw through the hole here. Adding a 40 millimeter aluminum spacer along with our 9 millimeter aluminum spacer. We're going to go ahead and attach it to our top right hole here. And make sure that you are attaching this to the back end of the machine. That's where these end plates are located. So just a heads up. All right, so we're going to go ahead and attach that. 
Make sure that it's not super tight. We want to go ahead and add our additional 60 millimeter screws and our aluminum spacers. And once again, we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. Not completely though, we want it a little loose. That's perfect there. So let's go ahead and do that for our additional two on the bottom. Alright, perfect. So make sure that we can go ahead and tighten all of these uh, 60 millimeter screws. We want to make sure that every single one of them is completely tight. So let's go around and check those. We don't want any movement in our motor. It's perfect. So let's go ahead and add our flexible coupling next. Once again, check the whole spacing. The quarter inch is going to be attached to the motor shaft. Let's go ahead and find the flat end of the shaft here and tighten down that set screw. Rotate it around and we'll tighten this this additional screw here. Perfect. So we're going to repeat the same process to our left side. So let's go ahead and get that done guys. All right, so now we can move on to our lead screws. So we're gonna go ahead and rotate this machine because we need to have access to each one of these C channels. So we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees. That way I can access the left side of the machine here. Let's so go ahead and grab one of your lead screws. Gonna run it through, adding a flanged bearing, eight millimeter shim, and a lock collar. We're gonna run it into our anti-backlash nut block and turning to the right, we're going to thread our screw, lead screw through until we see that it's exposed on the other side of our Y-axis left plate. Alright, so our lead screw is exposed, so let's go ahead and add our additional parts. Starting with our lock collar, our 8mm shim, and our flanged bearing. Let's go ahead and feed this all the way down. Until we reach our flexible coupling here at the motor. Alright, so you want to feed it all the way through until the lead screw is flush with the end plate. So that's perfect. So let's go ahead and lock in our flange bearing and tighten down that lock collar. Alright, that's perfect. Same on the left side here. Let's go ahead and tighten down that lock collar. Alright, and let's tighten down our flexible coupling. Alright, perfect. So let's go ahead and rotate our machine. We're going to do the same exact thing on the other side. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the machine. All right, perfect guys. So as you can see, our Y axis on both sides has both of our lead screws in place. They look great. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the machine to the front here so we can take a look at what we have done so far, guys. And it's looking great. Good job. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be adding our end caps to each one of our 20 by 60 rails. So in this step, we are going to need 12 of our end caps and 12 of our self-tapping screws here and our power drill. So to get started here, guys, we're going to go ahead and rotate the machine 90 degrees, exposing our 20 by 60 rail. Kind of let it hang off the edge a little bit. That way we can get some torque on there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and grab one of our end caps and a self-tapping screw. Noticing the way that this goes together, we have a recessed hole here. So the self-tapping screw is going to fit nice and flush on that end cap. So let's go ahead and take our power drill and attach this. Now holding tightly to the machine, we're going to go ahead and slowly drill in, back out, and back in. We'll loosen it slightly, that way we can straighten the end cap. And we're going to do that to the additional two, and then we're going to move around the whole machine. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, that looks great, guys. So we have all of our end caps in place. So let's go ahead and rotate our machine 90 degrees here to the front. All right, and let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, moving forward here, guys. We are going to be attaching our router spindle mount to our Z-axis. So in the step, we're going to need our router spindle, two of our black angle corner connectors, four of our 8 millimeter screws, and our ball driver. So to get started here, we're going to go ahead and attach our black angle corner connectors here to our router spindle. Let's go ahead and take one of your 8mm screws and black angle corner connector. And we are going to screw it into the furthest hole to uh, the end of the router spindle. And make sure it seats properly and it's flush to the end of the router spindle, like so. Alright, and let's go ahead and do that to the other side as well. All right, that looks great, guys. So let's go ahead and grab our additional 8 millimeter screws. We're going to go ahead and attach this to our Z-axis gantry. So as you can see here, we have, we have many holes on this double-wide gantry plate. We are shooting for the flush mount, so the router spindle should be flush to the bottom of the double-wide gantry. So as you can see, the hole placement is these two here on the end. So let's go ahead and attach the black angle corner connector here. It should slide in rather easy and once you have one in place the other one is no problem at all. So we're going to go ahead and attach this one here making sure that our router spindle is obviously square and it's flush to the bottom of this double wide gantry. That's perfect. Alright so let's go ahead and grab our additional 8 millimeter screw here. Go ahead and tighten that into place as well. Alright so now our router spindle is attached to our z-axis this machine's looking great guys check that out definitely looking forward to putting on the final touches here and let's go ahead and move on to the next step alright guys moving forward here we are going to be mounting our spoiler board to our sphinx 500 by 1000 so to start off guys we're going to need to go ahead and grab 12 of our self tapping screws and our power drill and we're also going to need to go ahead and rotate this machine 180 degrees. So let's go ahead and do that now. Alright, so we're facing the back of the machine. We're going to simply tilt it upward to give us access to the bottom of the machine so we can mount this spoiler board. Just slowly tilt it upward. Alright, so just making sure that you're keeping your hand on the spoiler board while we're tightening down these brackets. We're going to go ahead and grab our first self-tapping screw and we're going to start working on this left bracket here. So make sure you have a firm hand on the spoiler board and let's go ahead and place this self-tapping screw here.
All right, that looks great. So we're gonna go ahead and do the rest of our brackets here. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. Let's go ahead and rotate that to the front of the machine. So we'll rotate it 180 degrees. All right, that's looking sharp, guys. So we've got our mechanical portion of this machine done. And great job, guys.